All right, so in this episode, we're going to go ahead and implement the serialize and the serialize user functions. So it's pretty straightforward. So we'll go up top here inside the strategies file and we'll call passport serialize user. We'll pass in a callback function. The two parameters are user and done. Now I am going to get some type error and, um, and I'm using mongoose. So I actually can't even use the actual model to type annotate. So I'm just going to type annotate this as any for now. Okay. And I'm, all I'm going to do is call done and then pass in null and then user.id. Okay. And then let me go ahead and implement the deserialize user function. And the ID for this is just going to be a string and then done. Okay. So what we need to do here inside deserialize user function is basically, okay, so think of it like this. Whatever value I pass in as this parameter over here for the second argument inside the done function that we're calling inside serialize user, that value is going to be passed in as the first argument for deserialize user's callback function. So user.id, this is going to be id. If I were to pass in user, this would be user. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to actually uh, fetch the database to see if the user actually exists. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and wrap this in a try catch. Okay. And we'll basically do this. Uh, we'll do const uh, user equals await user dot find by ID. And remember this ID, it's not the discord ID. It's the actual document ID, the object ID, this one right over here that is automatically generated by MongoDB. Okay, so we're using that, not the actual Discord ID. You could use a Discord ID, but I would, I would prefer just using the actual object ID. Okay, and we'll just pass an ID just like that. Okay, and uh, let's see. So if the user is not found, so we'll use a ternary operator. So if user, okay, uh, if the user is found, we'll return done, pass in null for the error. And we'll pass in user. Okay. If the user is not found, we just pass in null and null. If there are any errors, we'll just call done, pass in the error, and then pass in null right over there. Okay, and that's just pretty much I think you know, let me actually do this. Uh let me actually remove this type annotation real quick. I wonder if I I think these are different. Yeah, these are different. I thought they might be the same, but they're actually different. Okay, don't worry about that. All right, cool. So we just implemented these two functions, okay? So remember, whenever you are authenticating, you, it needs to call the serialize user function. Calling done will call serialize user, okay? And then once you have serialized user into the session, okay, they will be f successfully authenticated, okay? And the whole point of deserialize user is to use the original ID to get the user. And then what happens is it takes that user object and it attaches it to the request object. So we'll know who the user is. The deserialize user function is always going to be called upon every single request. That's how we know who the user is when they're logged in. Okay. So let's go ahead and move this here. Let's try and authenticate now. And we should just get back a status code of 200 or a success. And this is coming from the redirect. Okay. And we have successfully authenticated. Okay, now uh, let's see what happens. So let me actually go into my browser and you should see on your browser, you should see this cookie. Okay, uh, so basically this cookie should appear in the browser. Make sure you have browser cookies enabled. Make sure they're not being blocked. Make sure you disable your ad block because sometimes uh, the cookie won't pop up uh, because of those reasons. Okay. So we have this cookie and this is basically a cookie that's going to be sent to our server every single time. So that way we know who the user is. Now, by default, all of the session data is stored in memory. It's, it's using the in memory store by default. We're going to have to make it so that we are using a session store, uh, like an actual session store to save the session to the database. And, and the reason why you might want to save your session data to a database, uh, one good reason is, let's say, for example, you want to keep the user logged in for a whole week, right? Well, what if your server just magically just restarts? 
within like the first two days, right? Well, the users are going to be logged out because all of that session data is gone. So if you save it to the database, the server will be able to pull session data from the database and then restore the session. Okay. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. In the next episode, we'll set up, uh, we'll set up the session store using MongoDB. Okay. It's going to be very easy and you'll see that all the session data will be saved in our MongoDB database. And once we have done that, we have successfully set up the entire, uh, backend API. And we can actually start to connect the front and the back end when it comes to authentication. And then we can start to make uh, requests uh, on behalf of the user to the, uh, to the Discord uh, API. So that's going to be pretty much it for this video. I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.